In this video, we're going to be talking about plant-based diets. So what is a plant-based diet? Is it the same as veganism? Why are so many people becoming vegan? According to the Vegan Society, the amount of vegans in Great Britain quadrupled between 2014 and 2018. And a recent Netflix documentary has been pretty persuasive that we should all be considering a plant-based diet. So what factors do we need to consider and what evidence is out there? Let's take a look. A couple of points to start off with. I am not a dietitian. I'm a medical doctor with a diploma in lifestyle medicine and a keen interest in nutrition. But if you do want expert, individualized advice, then you should go and see a dietitian. Second point to mention is I'm not going to be talking about the moral or ethical reasons of following any particular type of diet. That's completely up to you. But what I'm going to be looking into are the potential health consequences of following a plant-based diet. Okay, so kind of obvious question, but what is a plant-based diet? I remember being slightly confused when I first heard the term. Well, it's any diet that's focused around fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, and meat substitutes like soy protein. And there are variations on what people interpret to be a plant-based diet. You could be a flexitarian where you just have a small amount of animal protein. You could be a pescatarian where you eat fish but no meat, you could be a vegetarian where you do have dairy but you don't have meat or fish, or you could be vegan where you don't have animal products and that includes things like honey and gelatin. Generally people expect plant-based diets to be a healthier option. If you're eating lots of plant-based foods you're typically going to be reaching your five-a-day target having lots of fiber and vitamins and nutrients. However, you could just be eating refined carbohydrates and sugar and vegetable oil and that would all be vegan and not necessarily healthy. A recent Netflix documentary called The Game Changers looked into the apparent risks of consuming animal protein and meat. So let's have a little look into what are the dangers of eating meat. Well, for years, scientific evidence has pointed to the fact that a greater consumption of red meat is linked to increased cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease, especially with processed meat. For example, a 2012 study and the uh, Archives of Internal Medicine, which looked at two large, long-running studies, showed that those who ate more red meat had a slightly higher risk of all-cause mortality, so they were going to die of something, compared to those who ate the least amount of red meat. And those who ate more processed meat over a 28-year follow-up were 20% more likely to die during that period than those who didn't. Another review of prospective cohort studies found that in individuals with at least one lifestyle risk factor, such as smoking or heavy alcohol intake, a high amount of animal protein was positively associated with all-cause mortality, meaning they're more likely to die, and the opposite was true of plant protein. We also know that the World Health Organization has classified processed meat as a group one carcinogen, meaning we know it increases the risk of cancer. Just to muddy the waters, we've recently had some conflicting advice in the media following a publication from an international group of researchers in the Annals of Internal Medicine, who suggested that we can continue eating what average amounts of processed and unprocessed red meat and that shouldn't give us any risk of cancer at all. This goes against all other scientific evidence and guidelines and global cancer experts have refuted their review of the scientific evidence and suggested we stick with original existing guidelines. So we've talked a little bit about the potential dangers of eating meat. What about the benefits of eating a plant-based diet? Well, fans of a plant-based diet will tell you that it could potentially reduce your BMI, reduce your risk of chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes and heart disease, and it can even potentially reduce your risk of some cancers, including prostate and breast cancer. The protective effects of these foods are likely mediated through the multiple beneficial nutrients found within plant foods, which include phytochemicals, fiber, plant protein, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids, antioxidants, the list goes on. Fans of plant-based diets often cite the famous Seventh-day Adventist study, which showed that vegetarians live longer than non-vegetarians. However, when you dig down a little bit deeper into the study, you find that the researchers lumped together the fish-eating vegetarians with actual vegetarians, and those who ate fish actually lived longer than those who didn't. This correlates with the EPIC study, which found no significant difference in death rates between vegetarians and non-vegetarians. And in terms of lifespan, we know that other communities around the world, like the Okinawans and the Sardinians, eat meat and actually live longer than the Seventh-day Adventists, so we can't take too much from that study. So we've talked about the potential health benefits of a plant-based diet. Are there actually any risks associated with eating a plant-based diet? Some people, like Angelina Jolie, have come forward and said that they felt weak eating a vegan diet and felt better when they started eating meat again. 
But as long as you've got a well-planned vegetarian or vegan diet, the um, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics have approved vegetarian or veganism as a healthy diet and one that can actually lower your risk of chronic diseases. Bearing in mind as long as you are vegan that you are having some B12 supplementation. On the flip side, are there actual benefits of consuming animal protein? Well, animal protein contains all of our essential amino acids, whereas plant protein does not. And bioavailability isn't as good in plant protein as it is in animal protein, therefore we can't digest it as easily. To try and think of it simply, an egg is considered to be perfect protein at around 100%. Uh, beef is not too far behind at 92%, whereas the highest amount of protein found in vegetarian foods is in a kidney bean, which is around 53%. It's also been postulated that eating certain types of fish, like cod, can improve lipid profile, glycemic control and insulin sensitivity. So there are some benefits to eating animal protein. Some people cite evolutionary arguments as to why we should eat or avoid certain foods. Some say we weren't designed to eat meat, we don't have any claws, we don't have fangs, which is true. We're not essentially carnivores, but we're not herbivores either. We lack the multiple stomachs and rumens of animals like cows. Some say we shouldn't eat cooked food, we're only meant to eat raw food, but that ignores the fact that cooking allows all nutrients to come together and makes food more digestible. Others argue we can't digest meat at all, which frankly is not true, we can and we do digest meat. So evolutionary arguments tend to miss the point. We're not carnivores, we're not herbivores, we're omnivores. And evolution has equipped us to be able to manage and, and survive in really diverse environments, which has allowed us to eat whatever food has been available at the time and to thrive on it. Okay, so we've just moved to a different location. It's so beautiful around here and my kids, you may see them playing in the background and if you hear them, I'm sorry. They've come to help. So what about environmental concerns? Well, we know that a recent YouGov analysis has shown that 7% of the British population are likely to become vegetarian or vegan in the next year, of which 35% planning to do so because of concern about environmental impact on their diet. We know that environmental scientists and institutions, including the recent Eat Lancet report, are all suggesting we move towards a more plant-based diet to help prevent landmass degradation and mass species extinction. Yeah, can I have my bike back? Thanks, now. Oxford University scientist Joseph Poor has postulated that if every British family swapped one red meat meal per week for a plant-based meal, it would have the same environmental impact as taking 16 million cars off the road. Pretty big news. But cutting out food groups can lead to environmental pressures on certain ingredients. For example, avocados were being exported at such huge amounts that in 2018, Kenya had to cancel exports of avocados due to concern about the amount they would have in their own country. So some suggest that actually the best thing to do for the environment would be to buy local and buy sustainable, which could in the end be better for the environment than plant-based eating alone. So why is all this so conflicting and confusing? Nutritional science used to be so easy. In 1747, a Scottish doctor named James Lind wanted to find out why so many sailors got scurvy. He split them into six groups, and boom, the ones who were eating oranges and lemons got better, so he knew that vitamin C was the answer. These days, it's not such a problem as under-eating as over-eating, having too many calories of low-quality food, leading to chronic diseases like obesity, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. And these chronic diseases are not as simple to treat as just giving someone an odd orange. So we need to think holistically and look at lifestyle factors. So everything gets a little bit trickier. It's also not practical to run randomised controlled trials in nutritional research. Normally in pharmaceutical research you have two groups, one gets the treatment, one gets the placebo and you compare them at the end. It's nice and simple. In nutrition it's very hard to get two different groups of people having two different diets over a long enough period of time to be able to find out clues about has that diet led to that disease. So nutritional research really has to rely on observational studies which run for years and track very large numbers of people. But there's a lot of confounding factors with observational studies. Perhaps that those people who eat a lot of fish are also more health conscious and maybe that's why you get differences in health effects at the end. Other problems with food studies include that many nutritional studies are based on food surveys which are really unreliable and we are learning that different bodies react differently to certain types of food, probably down to genes and gut microbiota. So even that you can't compare. And some studies unfortunately have a great conflict of interest in terms of who is financing the study. And often we need to have a think and look behind that. So where does this all leave us? Well, I suggest if you want to follow an exclusive plant-based diet, i.e. vegan, then you just need to make sure you're getting some key nutrients that may be easily missed within a vegan diet. That includes vitamin D, B12 and omega-3 fatty acids. So you may need to find these in fortified foods or just take some supplements. 
If you do want to significantly change your diet, then I would recommend you do this slowly. So perhaps have one plant-based meal a week, move to two, move to three, you let your body get used to it. Ultimately, the evidence shows that it isn't necessary to eliminate entire food groups in order to be healthy. And if anyone is suggesting this to you, they're probably not basing it on sound nutritional science, because as we've shown, nutritional science isn't that easy to nail down. The key message to leave you with is that we should all be eating more plant-based food and probably cutting back on meat and especially processed meat. So whatever diet you want to try, just try and include more plants. This will no doubt benefit you and the environment, so you may end up happier and healthier. If you like this, click like and subscribe and I'll see you on my next video.